Hi, welcome back. Today, this verse we're going to talk about Psalm 46, verse 10. It goes, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Now this verse seems to be coming up to me a lot lately, and I usually take this as a sign that God is wanting me to emphasize or use something from the scripture in a particular place in my life. Uh, I really started thinking about this verse and sharing it with people who brought their needs and ponderings and wonderings about God before me. But really, what does God mean? What is he trying to tell us? How would you feel if you had a relationship with someone who either talked the entire time and never listened to your proven advice, or simply never consulted your advice at all? Or if they only gave you one or two hours a week to be with them and try to talk to them? Then they spent the time talking to others, texting, or goofing off. Be still. Hmm. Let's take this part of the verse. Throughout scripture, God takes as few words as necessary and lays out volumes of information for us to use in our daily lives. God was the original man of few words, and the Bible is the original zip file. When you open it up and you're programmed or tuned to read the file, it releases amazing amounts of material. Be still. So honestly, when was the last time you were still? Webster's Dictionary defines still as devoid of or abstaining from motion, uttering no sound, and free from noise or turbulence. Okay, without meaning any insult whatsoever, if you were a teenager in 2010, I would dare to say you haven't met these criteria much, if at all, in your life iPods, TVs, radios, CDs, friends, parents, school, work, and sports are just a few of the things that keep us moving. As I sit here writing this down, I'm surrounded by activities. Cars passing by, the dishwasher washing, the dog wants me to play with a ball, kids asking me to stay home from school, airplanes landing, lights blinking, the furnace is kicking on, and I've got mail. Now, when I was younger, my grandfather's favorite activity was called uh, sitting a porch. And basically, that involved sitting on the steps or maybe a lawn chair, and we just watched the world unfold in front of his house. And people would sometimes would wander by and strike up a conversation. Sometimes we'd only see small animals or birds. And during this time, we would, you know, think and make decisions about where life would take us. And these concepts are completely lost in today's world of, you know, microwave ovens and racing to be the first car at the next stoplight. If you think of stillness, I always picture a lake at dawn before the boats and jet skis come across it. Every bug landing or even the smallest fish turning is, is easily perceived. Or also like a golf course early in the morning where you can smell the grasses and fertilizers and you can hear the sprinklers clinking from hundreds of yards away. Stillness comes to mind in the words like waiting, pausing, thoughtfulness, solitude, quietness, calm, warmth, and, and fulfillment. Be still. In many places in the Bible, God communicates with people in very clear terms to direct them to what he desires for them. Moses wasn't seeking God with all his mind, heart, soul, and spirit when the burning bush was revealed to him. However, Moses had to be in a position to receive that message from God. Do you ever wonder if God tried to reach Moses before that? Was he too busy? Was he trying to accomplish his current task and overlook God's subtle calls for his attention? Paul was a very religious man and obviously had spent time in God's word and prayer. Why did God have to knock him from his horse before he accepted his calling? Science even promotes the value of stillness. Rest and relaxation are proven to restore the body and regenerate injury and fatigue. Panic, stress, lack of rest, these things actually do damage to the heart. Science has proven this. And God tells us that he dwells in your heart, so we can easily see that what is good for your heart is good and pleasing to God. So what about the opposite of still? What words come to your mind? Action, overreaction, stress, hectic, pressure, commotion, and turbulence. In our world today, so many people are in a constant state of motion, yet they seem to get nowhere. When I talk to them, they are always behind on something, or unhappy that they are up against or missed some deadline. They can't seem to focus their energy on anything, so they have it spread to the winds trying to achieve. They exist in two states, action and reaction. 
Rarely do they have a focused objective or truly long-term goals, let alone eternal goals. When we are still, we can hear even God's smallest whispers to us. God speaks to us very clearly. His directions are given in love. God doesn't tell us what we want to hear, and when God does want us to act decisively or urgently, He communicates this to us in no uncertain terms. He will make your way swift when urgent action is needed. The Bible actually says that He'll open the doors before you and pave your way to success in missions He sets you on. The second part of the verse is, Know that I am God. Now if you ask people, Do you know that God is God? They will probably say they do. Especially if they profess to be Christians and follow God's word. But do you know that God is God? I look at the Bible and I see stories of people who encountered God and how they reacted to it. Isaiah saw a vision of God and he cried out in anguish, Woe is me! Moses fell on his face before God. Do you know that God is God? Do you treat God as godly? When you come into God's presence, are you simply in awe of the great I Am? As Christians, we are able to take our burdens directly to God's throne of grace and lay them down. We are able to cry out to Him and He hears our cries. Do you feel that sense of wonder and amazement that brought others to their knees? Do you sense your unworthiness to be in the presence of holiness? Do you cry out in fearful worship of being reminded of how much we need a Savior? When you truly know the power of God that is inside you, at your call to His works, how can you not go boldly into His world and proclaim His victory? God sets you on a path built on stone to accomplish eternal goals. Now, how do we know anything? Do you, do you apply yourself to study God, learn of God, question God? God invites you to know Him through questioning and faithfully testing Him. Nothing that occurs is surprising to God. The more you question God, the more you will learn about God. The more you seek God, the more you'll know God. He is always available, and He's always waiting to reveal Himself. So, where does all this lead us? If we listen to God, if we are still before Him and hear His plan clearly revealed to us, then we will know God. We'll know that He loves us so much deeper and more completely than we could ever love. We'll know that He desires the greatest for us, not just good or really good in all we do, but greatest. He wants us to love others like He loves us to the best of our abilities. In the New Testament, the Apostle Paul writes to the church at Philippi with a greeting of grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And this was a classic feeling of a man who knew his God and his God's plans for him. The circle of our faith revealed in, in grace given by God through his Son, Jesus Christ, and the peace we truly know from having that grace in our lives. When we get to this point in our faith, we truly become an exaltation for God amongst nations, by which he meant people, diverse groups of people, and the world in which we live. Our very lives become a living sacrifice to God. You know, in reading this, I looked up an article on wilderness survival that I had read a few years ago, and the first step they suggested was to simply stop and breathe and focus on one subject, like, say, God, and relax and control your emotions. The second step was to take stock of your resources, to pour out your pack and see what you have. So the next time you're feeling lost in this world, let's apply the worldly survival advice and employ faith as one of our resources. Stop, be still, focus on God, pour out your pack in prayer to God, calmly await your rescuer. He will find you wherever you are. So remember, Psalm 46.10, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Have a blessed day.